Yo, what's going on everybody? How you guys doing today? Today I have an insanely overpowered build that I actually think I hate myself for using this, but I wanted to show you guys just how far you could take Armor 2.0 into the end game. The main reason why I'm talking about Armor 2.0 and this build in particular, Armor 2.0 kind of exposes what you can do in the Crucible when you reach the end game. When you make builds that are around discipline, strength, intellect, there's a lot of fun that can be had. On the other hand though, you can destroy Crucible with these builds. So today's build, you guys are gonna hate me. All right, let's get started with this build. So the first thing that you're going to want is Attunement of Fission, which is the middle tree void warlock. This class has Nova Warp, and it has Atomic Breach, Handheld Supernova, and Dark Matter. What's important here is handheld supernova for this build. As you guys know, if you play a lot of Crucible, handheld supernova is very annoying. Somebody can hold their grenade and they throw it and they seem to kill you from a pretty far distance. It does an exuberant amount of damage. So handheld supernova is already annoying. And as we know, Atomic Breach, you punch somebody and it does a void explosion, nearly killing somebody in one hit. Well, finally, Dark Matter is one of the main parts of this whole entire tree. Void ability kills grant health, melee, grenade, and class ability energy. So if you're getting void kills in general, you will get grenade energy, you will get melee energy, and you'll get class ability energy. So the first thing that you're gonna want for this build is Monte Carlo, actually. I did some experimenting and I think Monte Carlo will work absolutely great, especially for that final part of the tree where with Monte Carlo, you get kills with this weapon or you do damage to enemies with this weapon and your melee ability charge comes back. This will allow you to constantly be getting grenades and constantly be able to get your melee back up for those void ability and regen kills. Next, and this is the most important one, Controverse Holds. Controverse Holds are already very, very powerful. You can resist incoming damage while charging your Void Grenade with Chaos Accelerant. Feed the Void or Handheld Supernova. Charge Void Grenades return a random amount of grenade energy on a hit. This is important because if I throw a grenade with a handheld supernova, I'm getting damage resistance, I'm also getting health if I get a kill, I'm getting ability regen faster if I get a kill, and on top of that, Controverse Holds makes it so I get a random amount of grenade energy back. Sometimes I can throw a nade, kill two people, instantly have my grenade back. Now finally, what completes this whole entire build is 100 Discipline in Armor 2.0. At max, my grenade ability cooldown is 32 seconds to get a grenade. That means if I'm using Controverse Hold, I'm throwing a grenade, I'm getting a kill, I might get three quarters of my grenade energy back, which means if I'm at 10 discipline, I am getting that grenade back almost instantaneously anyway. And the final icing on the cake on this build is what's called Oppressive Darkness. Now, Oppressive Darkness is typically used in PvE since it has a tractor cannon like debuff that it applies, which means that when you get the void damage, it weakens enemies similar to how tractor cannon does. So typically you'll see it used in PvE. However, with Oppressive Darkness in PvP, it does work, especially for handheld supernovas. You can almost, I tried so hard, but you can almost kill every single super with one supernova. So if you can get one hand cannon shot, one anything kind of shot on an enemy who's using super and charging you, and you charge your handheld supernova and just let it fly, you will kill them almost every single time. And once again, this feeds into everything else in the build. It's all about handheld supernovas, meleeing, using Monte Carlo, and getting your abilities back. This build is absolutely cracked, and the reason why I wanted to make this video was more to highlight the things with Armor 2.0 that I don't think everybody sees. I think we all love Armor 2.0, and I do too, but in Crucible, it can be abused pretty badly. So guys, in Iron Banner, if you see me running around with this, be sure to teabag me, because I hate myself for making this build anyway. And if you did enjoy the video, a like would be greatly appreciated, as well as a subscription, and you can follow me on Twitch if you feel like it. We just hit the milestone of 2,000 followers not that long ago, and I'd like to thank you guys for 1,500 subscribers on YouTube as well. That's insane. That's a lot of people. Anyway, guys, I will see you in the next video. Peace!